Hi, I'm Jeff by Scars, and this is my BMW 523i Touring in Glacier Green that I just bought from Jeff Easter Matt. This is the story. So um, I am in the BMW E39 um, 5 Series 523i Touring and I have to say it is lovely. This one, from what I've found so far, all I've done is um, taxed it and insured it and put some fuel in it and now I'm sitting in traffic in Guildford. Um, and apparently I'm gonna be here forever. So inside the cabin I've got, what's really interesting is the dash top isn't actually black. It's a very, very dark shade of green and it's beautiful. It's perfectly complemented, to use a uh, marketing car sales term, by the, uh, the dark wood interior. And um, what a lovely wooden knob. So I'm feeling like I've gone up in the world, really. Um, I've slowed myself down. This is some comfy slippers, although it has the same engine, pretty much, as my um, E46 325i saloon that I started today in. And um, if I was pushed and said, someone said to me, which car would you rather drive for a long journey? I'm afraid the answer is the E39, because I'm a granddad. Lovely interior. I don't know what that colour is, but I am going to find out and put that in the next review video. I've got everything I need. Um, if I was going to pick faults with it, I think it needs a thermostat because the temp gauge isn't running in the middle and I know my BMWs very well. They always need a, um, a thermostat and um, that means the temp gauge will run at the correct level and it means I will get the correct amount of heat in my car and it means my fuel economy will probably increase just slightly. But that's old BMWs for you. I've had enough of these cars to know that that's not too much of a problem. Little bits of rust here and there. Um, good good wedge of documents with it. It's only three owners from new. So it's a three owner car and um, it's great. I mean, I feel like I say the same thing in all my videos but it's because all the cars I buy I buy because I like them and I could see myself living with them. What's the definition of a Jeff car? It's old, it's cool, and it's about a grand, basically. That's a Jeff car. Um, doesn't matter what it is. Could be a Peraldo, a Nipper, could be a BMW, could be a Rolls Royce. If it's old and cool and you can buy it for about a grand uh, and it's MOT'd and not a total project and it's respectable enough for you to take it on the school run or to a wedding, then that's a Jeff car. Let's call it a grand. I got a bit of mates rates on that from Matt. I think retail, it's probably 1,200, 1,500 quid at best, um, but that doesn't matter for what I need to do with it. What a lovely car for a thousand pounds. It's so nice in here. So much nicer than all the model stuff. I've got this big steering wheel with all my controls on it. Everything seems to work, climate control, cup holders. My lights are just a switch. It's not overly complicated. I mean, we are getting into the more complicated era of cars with the E39. They did have some notorious electrical gremlins. Um, I once killed one by driving it through a flood in Scotland and um, it never ran the same. It never worked the same after that experience. So they are, um, they are sensitive to electrical issues, but, one of the finest designed and developed BMWs. In my personal opinion, the last of the great looking five series, and in the right specification, one of the best looking five series of all time. I mean, you're never gonna beat the E34, but in my personal opinion, BMW E34 5 Series, BMW E39 5 Series, BMW E46 3 Series, BMW E38 7 Series are the great ones that you can still afford. Yes, E30s are lovely, but the prices have just gone ridiculous. Um, same for all the earlier stuff as well, you know, your 635 CSIs, forget it, it's out of reach. So, go for the next best thing, which is something slightly more modern. And um, they look fantastic on the M parallel wheels, but um, my choice is these, um, I think these are called turbines, and they're big and floaty, like my big, floaty estate car, which I'm gonna float home in when this traffic finally lets me. So, 116,000 miles, ignore the MPG because I just reset it, so let's see what I get on the way home. Got my heaters on, which is nice, because it is cold out today, and um, it's so plush and luxurious in here that um, you'll see that I have actually gone barefoot. So, uh, for the rest of the two hour drive home, I've gone barefoot. And if you can't drive barefoot in your car, then um, you got the wrong car. Right, I'm gonna crack on and um, enjoy my E39. I've got a few miles under my belt now. I feel like I've got to know the car better. Um, 
just spent a lot of time in a sort of 60 mile an hour limit there and I found that hilarious because I just had visions of the police coming up behind me and getting pulled over after about 10 miles and the police officer saying, to mind me asking why you did 70 mile an hour consistently through that 60 limit and I'd have to say, well officer, I'm very sorry, but at 60 mile an hour, the vibration from the steering wheel is so uh, so horrendous, it makes me uh, it makes it very difficult to stay in one lane. All right, slight exaggeration, but there's definitely um, there's a vibration, there's something, um, there's definitely there, there, there's something coming through the steering wheel at 60 mile an hour, so probably a tracking or wheel balancing sort of issue. Um, generally, though, I'm very comfortable, despite the fact that I didn't bring my Bluetooth adapter and I'm having to listen to the radio, uh, which is torture in and of itself. Um, no, very comfortable. Um, it feels very sturdy. Everything about this car is properly built and heavy. It's very heavy. It does feel very heavy. Um, you know, I, there's just no point putting your foot to the floor because it's like trying to drive a tank that's being powered by the pushing power of a five-year-old. Um, that is sort of how it feels. I'm not going to go as far to say it's underpowered because if I pushed my foot flat into the carpet and wound it on, I would probably find that it goes absolutely fine. It's just the way the car feels. It feels chunky and it feels heavy and, it, and that, that's kind of reassuring. I don't want to push my foot all the way into the carpet anyway. What would be the point in that? I'd just use all the fuel. Speaking of which, 33.6 miles to the gallon um, is what I've got so far and I've probably been doing bang on 70 mile an hour for most of that. So um, there you go, that's going to be the drawback with a car like this, it is going to be the fuel economy. Um, it's not going to be the best on fuel, but if you need a stay car and fuel isn't really too much of a bother for you, can you really go wrong with that? Cruise control. But I am curious to get it to a garage and find out exactly what that, um, I don't know, there's maybe like a slight wondering, it's a slight wondering that my car has got. Um, it's not like it's a battle to keep it in one lane, as you can tell, because I'm quite chilled in the way of driving here. Um, it's just, I don't know, a wobble. It's got a wobble, but it hasn't got any knocks. Wobbles, but no knocks. Um, probably just needs a bit of power steering fluid. Every single other car that I own right now is leaking power steering fluid, so it would make sense that this one was leaking power steering fluid as well. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to the sunset, and um, I think that's the end of the video, because it's gonna get dark, and I haven't got a great deal more to say, other than, you need to slow down. It's always a BMW, isn't it? And um, thank you very much for watching, and good night. I might just finish off this sunset for you, all right? We'll, uh, we'll have some music, and we'll fade to black, all right? Cheers, everyone. YouTube's most boring car channel.